The first person uh, that uh, I get to introduce, a great pleasure, a colleague of mine, uh, Dave Lounsbury, who's the uh, Chief Technical Officer for the Open Group. I'm not used to spelling it out, we just usually say CTO. Um, as CTO, Dave ensures that the people and IT resources at the Open Group are effectively used to implement the organization's strategy and mission, including the Open Group's proven processes for collaboration and certification, both within the organization and in support of third-party consortia. Uh, in this presentation, Dave will give a brief overview of the Open Group vision, how standards enable the digital first enterprise, the principles by which the Open Group will develop such standards, an update on progress on the key work products, and a roadmap of future activities. So uh, over to you, Dave. Great. Thank you very much, Steve, for that intro. Yeah, it, is, uh, it has been a while. My hair is quite white. <laughs> so I want to talk a little bit today about what the Open Group means to be digital and how we recognize the change in industry direction you've heard from many of our other speakers and we'll hear again from uh, our speakers this afternoon and i want to talk about how we've reacted to that through the development of standards start with one of our first standards the dp box standards and then talk about the lessons we've learned organizationally and how we're building on that to move towards a, a portfolio of open digital standards for digital first enterprises So we hear the word digital thrown around a lot, and a lot of people have different definitions of it, and a lot of people are confused by this term digital transformation. And you're not alone in being confused. The confusion is rooted in focusing on, on, on the transformation itself, you know, how do I get from A to B, or technologies labeled as digital, some like smack it technologies, and not so much on what it takes to be a sustainable digital enterprises. And to do this, you really need to look beyond this immediate transformation to what competencies and processes you need to operate that sustainable digital enterprise. And transformation is just how you get there. It's the as is from the to be. Now, this is widely recognized as Andras said, this is a transformation that has been going on for a long time. And we're starting to get good industry guidance on how that, uh, how that change is happening. People are looking beyond simply applying our past incremental architecture approaches and program management strategies to reorienting organizations through the delivery of value through digital technology. This is something McKinsey calls the great accelerator. Uh, as um, Andras mentioned, you know, we're all being forced to uh, be digital in our, in our delivery of goods and services. And you see the quote here um, from uh, the book that was uh, written by uh, uh, Jeannie Ross, Cynthia Beef, and Martin Mocker, um, that we're, we're businesses are now taking a look beyond um, their past enterprise architectures and really asking themselves, what do we need to do to be uh, a digital first organization? And there's an interesting progression here, picking up on what Andras said. You know, we've, as he said, we've long uh, used technology to improve the performance or the reach of our enterprises. You know, we've got digital and things and and uh, social media things like that, and um, those things have changed the way we interact with our customers. And now, these other uh, other guidance, as I think, is. Uh, um, as exemplified by our design for digital book is that you the reorientation to not confuse this this progress in digitization with the transformation of your business model from a mixed delivery mode to one where the di delivery of goods and services digitally is your uh, primary way of doing business and this is what uh, i've heard Jeannie ross say many times uh, ask what is the uber moment in your in your industry now, of course, the Open Group members recognize this, and we're reshaping our standards to address the needs of these digital first enterprises. Uh, we're working to coordinate the activities of the forums and work groups to pr produce a coherent and cohesive set of standards to address this, this digital change and give you the guidance you need to sustainably operate at digital first enterprises. So I'll talk about the specifics in a bit, but I first want to talk about what's motivated us for this 
and then we'll go in and look at some of our existing and upcoming open digital standards. So, what motivates us? Now, you see my white hair here, and of course what my generation always does is we blame the millennials. But the millennials here are really the digital natives. These are people who have grown up with digital access and they expect to interact with your enterprise digitally, even if it's only doing a web search to check your reputation on their social networks. And these people are really showing us the way to the digital future. You know, that and the acceleration of COVID, which uh, people have uh, mentioned. <clears throat> so this was happening already. And the, uh, your organization's ability to satisfy this, this mode of interaction um, and satisfy the, the uh, digital natives' uh, desire to conveniently look up and access your product and services, that's that convenience is going to outweigh any loyalty they have to your product, service, or brand. You know, you don't really control the buying agenda with these customers the way you might have in the past. So it's a big challenge. Now, there's no reason we can't meet this challenge. We have abundant computing and network resources, and nobody lacks the technical means to meet the expectation of these digital natives. Now, many companies are in the midst of reorganizing themselves to do this, and a lot of them are struggling to do that. And so this is where the standards and practices defined by the open group come in. And what we need is the models for creating and growing a digital enterprise and digitally savvy workforce that, with, that has the knowledge to turn these abundant computing resources into the actual value for the digital customer. I want to emphasize this workforce point. The ability to train and manage a digital workforce is likely to be a key differentiator in your ability to run a digital-first enterprise. The strong correlation between enterprises who have successfully made transformations to a digital-first orientation and the companies that are making investments in the digital workforce retraining for all their employees. Uh, we heard yesterday from Fidelity, they, they talked about their 20% Tuesday. A, day that's dedicated to employee re-education for this new digital model. So obviously, we need to retrain people, and they need a knowledge base to do that from. And this knowledge needs to be captured in such a way that it can be used by staff at all levels. This is not just a C-level transformation. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is, as every business person should, um, that if you succeed in your business, someone other than you is going to be doing the work over time, right? You know, you may start it, but then you'll delegate it. It'll be handed off. So we need to arm the people you're delegating to with the knowledge they need to succeed in the digital world. Now, we do have to, of course, recognize the fact that digital's rapid rise was fueled by a lot of technological advances. You know, these new approaches to interacting with your customers and enablers like digital excuse me, social, mobile, cloud computing uh, that provides us that abundant computing resources, big data and advanced analytics, and now increasingly Internet of Things and artificial intelligence. You need a business framework to make sense of all these things. You're just going to end up chasing the shiny toys and not really making that digital transition. So what role does the open group play? Well, we're a standards body, as you heard earlier today. We make standards and guides. We uh, enable, uh, we produce training materials and create training ecosystems, and we create programs so that practitioners and services can be certified so that you know they're, they're following these standards and best practices. So given that, we're all agile people, so we ask ourselves, what the, what's the job to be done? What do we need to make these kinds of standards happen? So we want to gather the best practices for digital success from across the industry, and we want to make sure that these are rooted in the dual enablers of lean and agile. Now, the Open Group does this. For those of you who are members, you're very familiar with this. We do it through open participation and development of consensus positions, and then we use that to produce the relevant and usable content. And as I said earlier, back that with training and certification programs. And this, of course, enables 
the individuals who have taken that training and have gotten certified to succeed at digital uh, activities. And that, of course, will then be the foundation for their organizational success. We might ask ourselves, well, don't we have plenty of standards that we can use for digital? Well, there's a lot we can learn from. There's a lot of industry past practice that's provided a, a strong foundation. It's gotten us this far. But we always need to filter this past practice through the lens of a digital first delivery model. And not all guidance is going to pass that test. Uh, some of it is not rooted in that, that agile and learning environment that we heard about earlier. Uh, some of it is very prescriptive in terms of you have to go exactly right to left. Um, that um, it actually, uh, we need to think about whether it lacks community involvement, whether it's kept up to date or not. So these are things we want to learn from, but not necessarily replicate. So the open group tackled this problem. We formed our digital practitioner work group uh, several years ago now. And I'll let you read the, uh, the vision here, but it's basically, how do we gather that information? How do we understand what it means to be digital? And how do we make that provide that digital customer experience that Andras mentioned in the previous presentation? So we've started with this digital practitioner work group. We've got several other forums participating. We heard about, well, I'll get to that later. Um, so uh, it's an idea that is spreading throughout the open group. And of course, where we want to start was, what are our definitions? Uh, Andras has stolen my thunder a bit here. He's shown some of these definitions, but they're good ones here. We have the definitions of Getting back to that cartoon, we actually do have a definition for what it means to be uh, digital. And we draw the distinction between a digital enterprise that delivers value through digital means or mediates their physical goods and services through digital means. And we separate that from the digitalization, that incremental improvement of our processes that improve our ability to service those customers. A digital transformation is something where we reform the business model of the organization towards becoming a digital enterprise, and that's supported by digital technology. We've got one I want to hint at here, a digital product, the definition that's coming soon, being developed by our IT for IT forum. So you can join with them if you're open group members uh, to help uh, shape that definition. First output of this, uh, of this group was the uh, digital practitioner body of knowledge standard. Uh, this is an attempt to uh, create a truly open consensus framework for what matters and what people should know to be digital. There's a lot of books, blogs, videos, conferences, you know, uh, everything you can imagine. Uh, there's a lot of volume, and the variety of this information tends to be a little overwhelming. So we've taken that, we've abstracted those best practices. We've developed it actually using open source and uh, DevOps approaches. And what we've done is we've curated the most credible current information on a comprehensive and well-organized set of topics for the digital practitioner. It's organized in kind of a unique way. Typically, when you see standards, you see uh, either a life cycle approach that you go from you know plan, build, run, or left to right. Uh, or you get a stack approach that you have different layers of things that you do, uh, each one depending on the other. And one of the things that we strongly recognize when we see companies going through their digital experience is that um, you start small and you grow. There's case studies, and I'll cite those from the MIT CISR, that says a transition for digital is best done through an innovation approach. Uh, you start small and you bring the learning and success models back to the parent organization. We also wanted to stay away from this, uh, you know, left to right and waterfall thinking that's characterized a lot of past practices and really focus on what you need to know when you need to know it at your current stage of evolution instead of having to figure it out from scale-free guidance. And this replicates what you see in industry where organizations tend to cluster at certain points of growth in their life cycle. And so we really wanted to structure our guidance around that. Ask ourselves, what's the simplest thing that could possibly work at your current stage of evolution? And how can we prepare people to take the next step in their evolution? And you'll see here the four uh, key, uh, what we call context that we've done this in, the individual founder, 
where you have a small startup activity, uh, whether embedded in an enterprise or, or in the garage. Uh, we talk about building the team to grow the organization. At some point, one team is too big to manage, so you talk about the team of teams approach. And then at some point, you get to the idea you've got lots of teams and you've got to worry about your organizational continuity and governance for the long term. So that's the organizational structure of the DP bot. And you can see here the that structure and the what we call the 12 competency areas inside the DP BOC, the digital fundamentals at the founder level, the digital fundamentals of how you actually deliver value digitally, uh, what infrastructure you need to do that, and what you need to think about to deliver your first digital app application. At the second level, you go to the team structures where you have to think about how you manage the team. Uh, how you manage a product. You've got multiple iterations of a product and you need to think about how that gets uh, run. Uh, the team needs to figure out how to work. Uh, there have to be work styles and you have to manage the activities of the team and um, you know how they get their work done and how you measure them, how you hold them accountable to use the uh, CISR term. And of course, there's a certain amount of operations management. You've got products to deliver. You've got to think about workflow schedules and things like that. So you, the core management activities. When you get to the point where you've got multiple teams involved, you really need to think about organizational issues, things like organization and culture. You need to divide your, your financial resources among the teams and make bets for which one of those teams is going to succeed. So you need to think about your portfolio and how you invest in it. And you need to think about cross-team coordination because there's going to be activities that will span team boundaries. And finally, as that team, that team of teams culture succeeds, you need to think about the ongoing enduring enterprise concerns, governance, risk, security, compliance audits, things like that. You need to treat your information as an asset. And you need to have a robust enterprise architecture that can accommodate a learning, uh, learning environment. So that's the whirlwind tour of the DP Bach. Uh, now, as I said, we, we backed that up with a uh, certification and training ecosystem for your digital workforce. You can learn more about this at this URL here, opengroup.org slash certification slash DP Bach. And that's been the foundation of our digital thinking here at the Open Group. We haven't stopped there. So, in any learning organization, you need to capture what you've learned and start having it influence the rest of your organization, move to that team of teams level. And so what did we learn on, and how do we apply this to other standards? So we've developed a vision, what we call the digital first enterprise. And this is, I'll let you read it here, um, very close to the open group vision, but helping the uh, businesses create value for their customers using digital and agile ways of working. And we're doing that through developing a set of standards uh, that can be used together to accelerate the adoption of digital practices in an organization. These, this uh, vision is guided by a set of principles. And we've now, this is a published document of the Open Group. You can see the link down here in the bottom where the first step we've done is to codify these principles and these cover things like the business principle. What are the, the business objectives you want to get for your open digital standards? Things like consistency, uh, that you provide a continuum of guidance for people who are coming into this new digital world and that you, you make sure that you bring along the practitioners who are fluent in other practices and can have them quickly adopt the digital practices as well. We want to talk about what a digital standard should say about digital practices. I've mentioned earlier the assumptions of lean and agile. It's fundamental that you have a learning organization, uh, that you use iteration as a way of exploring your customer requirements and deliver value incrementally. If you're going to do that incrementally, you need to have continuous delivery and you need to be efficient at doing that. Uh, we've talked already about things like the emergence model that you need to be prepared to grow in an organization. We also want our standards to talk about how they can navigate scaling boundaries if they're coming from a more traditional organization that's been successful for years. How do they start to retool themselves so that they can 
you know, adopt some of these new digital ways of working. And finally, you know, we want there to be a very high quality set of standards. We want there to be a consistent terminology. We want there to be uh, these standards to be easily navigable and easily discoverable. Remember that digital native I talked about earlier. If they can't find their way, if they're in the workforce and they can't find their way through these standards, they're not going to, they're going to move on. They're going to look for other, thor other materials. So we need to make sure that our standards live up to the expectations of our digital consumers. Now, the open groups forums are responding strongly to this vision. Um, I've talked about the standards that are already there, DP box standard. I'll say a few more words about our open agile architecture standard. Um, our IT for IT standard, which has been a reference architecture for delivering uh, IT technology products, uh, is reorienting itself towards this digital vision, and in particular looking towards the um, management of um, digital delivery and digital products. And of course, we just heard about you know our zero trust and um, uh, our security standards, things like zero trust and the OTTF, which are essential for having uh, trustable components. Our forums, like I said, are already working together on this. Um, we're starting to map content between these things. I'll, I'll give some examples in just a second. We don't have a rigid structure for our digital work. Um, it's very complex to coordinate. And we're going to take that lean approach that we advocate for de developing consistency and co cohesiveness um, amongst our standards. So let me dive into some of those examples from the last few minutes here. Um, Our most recent big publication in this area has been the Open Art Agile Architecture Standards, and you can see the publication number here. It's a truly excellent document, and it underpins how you architect an organization to be digital and operate at scale in an iterative way. Um, it emphasizes the iteration for, uh, for learning from the marketplace. Uh, we want to have um, it based on a product architecture vision so you can quickly innovate your product and learn from that market feedback. We want it to be based on a business operating model that is scalable, and that will be underpinned by modular and reusable software components. And finally, one that's very important in any Agile organization, how you reshape your organization such that the communication among and the feedback from the marketplace flows quickly to the people who can affect it. Agile organization also, of course, has an operating model that learns and scales from this. And you see here the key parts of that, the feedback from the customer, uh, the product architecture, the agile strategy, driving a set of products that you iterate and redesign to make sure that you're always meeting the needs of the customer. And that's underpinned by uh, knowledgeable digital workforce, automation to deliver quickly, reusable software assets, and a good and secure sourcing mechanism. Let me move on to IT for IT. We said IT for IT has always had a sol provided a solid foundation for how you go from your strategy, your business strategy, to developing software, to fulfilling that software in the marketplace, and operating that successfully. As we heard from yesterday from Jan Strobe, uh, that's already been being used to manage the flow of digital products. And learning from this and taking on board the IT, uh, the digital principles, uh, they're in the process of updating its standard, and you're going to see this idea of the service model backbone being migrated to a new version with uh, towards a digital product backbone in the V3 version. Uh, there's already a preview of this that you can uh, take a look at. This is the white paper, Why Business and, co and IT Have to Co-Create Strategy in the Digital Enterprise. And you can see here already that adaptation from, uh, you know, the digital life cycle, from, from life cycle management to digital product management. And to give you a little preview of what's going on there, 
you can see here the classic IT for IT uh, plan, build, deliver, and run ideas now being overlaid with those uh, feedback paths where a, an organization constantly iterates at all levels in order to take the feedback from the marketplace and feed it all the way back, not into just product development, but all the way back to its strategy and portfolio management. So that reorientation towards customer facing, customer feedback and learning is very important. So last but never least, the TOGAF library has vast amounts of information on best practices uh, in the enterprise and how to do architecture for business at all scales. And our architecture forum is working to make that, that knowledge accessible to the digital practitioners and the architects that are supporting digital enterprises at all scales and doing those digital driving those digital transformations. So this, this document is currently in company review for those members of the open group or in the audience. I'd urge you to take a look at this and please uh, give us your comments. So we've talked about our, our digital vision and, and how some of our standards fit. I'm gonna build this out all the way. Um, there are many places where our standards apply in building out a digital trans in supporting a digital transformation. Uh, you'll see them here. We've got a lot of activity going along across a lot of forums. And we've got a, a long road ahead of us. Uh, we've got things that we want to do and we'd like you all to join with us here, having a consistent terminology, uh, being able to talk about uh, how you uh, manage people and bring people along, how we modularize the documents that I mentioned earlier, and of course, continual improvement to make our standards uh, specific. So uh, that's a whirlwind overview of what we're doing in our digital vision here. Again, please join us. If you want to learn more, I'll point you to our, uh, our very good uh, digital enterprise uh, webpage, and there's some very good YouTube videos on that explore this in a little bit uh, more depth.